This is the Power Apps podcast from CRM Audio. What you need to know about Microsoft Power Apps and Flow. This episode is brought to you by Ingenius. Ingenius Connector Enterprise integrates your telephone system into Microsoft Dynamics 365 and CRM for increased phone agent productivity. This solution equips service desks and contact centers with features like screen pop, click to dial, automated call logging, and call reports for a comprehensive view of interactions. Enable efficient customer service and intelligent decision making with Ingenius. We thank Ingenius for sponsoring the Power Ups podcast from CRM Audio. Welcome to episode two of the Power Apps podcast here on the CRM Audio Network. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Power Apps podcast really talks about anything to do with Power Apps, Flow, or any of the related technologies. So it's a fun time, had by all. And uh, today we have a different set of co hosts. I've been waiting for this for a long time. It's those Dynamics guys invading hey. Serum Audio. <laughs> yeah, what's up? So, and in uh, with uh, those uh, those Dynamics guys, we have Will Dorrington, we have Chris Huntingford, and we have Kyle Hill. So guys, I know you're excited. I know you've had it on your calendar for some time. Can't wait to talk to Sean. That's all great. But <laughs> those Dynamics guys... Tell our audience a little bit about that and how that came to be. Okay, so, uh, well, those Dynamics guys, in its essence, is a community-based collaborative site. And what we mean by that is it allows you to draw on all the information you may have and contained uh, from previous experience. You can then dump it onto the site and share it with the community. Uh, so it allows you to connect with people within your community, within the Dynamics community. It allows you to create groups of interest so you can share things on maybe PSA, CDS, Power Apps. It allows you to read the articles and just truly engage with one another in a collaborative manner. Uh, Chris, what's your views on TDG, man? Well, it, other than it being a really great excuse to drink beer and talk about dynamics, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just love the fact that we had the, the opportunity to try and get some of the community involved. And, um, you know, look, we, we do this all the time, right? We, we talk about oh, yeah. dynamics and all the different functions and modules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for me, it was really just about giving it a name. And thanks, Will. That was a good name. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, the whole goal here is just it's a mechanism for us to do cool stuff like host hackathons and post articles and things and so far so good we've we've loved working together i think exactly that i mean actually connecting with other uh, sort of community members you know seeing their troubles and then actually publishing the article so if you've run into issues getting it back out there sharing it with the community so we can move forward you know standing on the uh, shoulder of giants as they say so you can actually see a little bit further uh, so I think that's fair, Will, because it also gives us the opportunity to focus on um, some of the specialties within the business app platform. So as an example, Chris Chris loves Dynamics 365 for marketing, and as, as part of TGD, he actually gets to you know do a deep dive on that, evaluate it, and evangelize it uh, out into the community. Um, and, and yourself, you've had similar you know uh, sort of engagement on the Power App side of things, and, and most recently your super mario app that uh, did the rounds and and that's typically stuff you get to do outside of work but is, is is really you know contributing to the community and engaging and 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 you see a lot of people wanting to get involved so so as of right now those dynamics guys it, you have a you have a blog you have a youtube channel or is that your individual channels yeah i've got my own one but um i think i post through tdg onto my youtube or vice versa actually post through youtube onto tdg really and like i surface the the video recordings there so don't know if video is the right thing for me man um trying to trying to figure it out (laughs) so 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 besides this would this be your audio exposure for tdg yeah i I guess so i don't we don't have any other any other Uh, um podcasts going we're not cheating on you sean i'm not gonna lie (laughs) yeah i'm getting i'm getting a little I'm getting a little teary-eyed. Get a little emotional. <laughs> it's a moment. You're the only one. Having a all. moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I am super excited to have you guys. This is gonna be this is gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna our our goal is twice a month. We'll come to you with uh, power apps and flow uh, information and other other audio gold. Um, cool. And and uh, I, I, I for those listening, I know I put out on Twitter that this episode was supposed to come out sooner. Um, and it was. We were going to record on Sunday, 
And unfortunately, you know, trains being what they were, Will couldn't make it. And my daughter, when uh, I told her, you know, I she thought I was going to podcast, and I said, no, I, I'm not going to be able to, you know, one of the guys, you know, is running behind. And she goes, oh, was he running late for a spot of tea? And, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and, and I said, thank you, Emily. That is gold. I'm going to use that on the podcast. So, <laughs> so uh, Sean, go. honestly, if you start bringing up tea, tea near Will, it doesn't contain any beer, so he starts, like, freaking out and melting. It's really oh, weird. <laughs> He's convulsing <laughs> right now in his seat. Yeah. It's going to be a bit of time. <laughs> All right, so let's do this real quick. Uh, yeah. Since we have three uh, three different distinct voices, let's do a quick. Uh, this is the sound of my voice, so everybody understands who's who. So let's start with Will, even though he just went mute. There you go, Will. Hello. So uh, do you say a who's who, or or me to literally say this is the sound of my voice? Well, you've done both, so good <laughs> good on you. <ya. laughs> there we go, Chris. Your turn. <laughs> hey guys, this is Chris. Um, otherwise, one man, one desire. <laughs> Lord. And then this is the the voice of the amazing, gorgeous main, so named from Sean, <laughs> also known as Carl Hill. Very good. All right, boys. So what are, what's on the agenda? What are we going to yeah. talk about in this episode? Right. So I figured I figured basically since um we've been running around the country, well the UK, doing um loads of stuff with power apps. I figured we'd we'd kind of start with that and talk about some of the bits and pieces we had we'd been doing. Um, there was a a power app off with Microsoft. Um, we did some cool stuff at Dynamics 365 Saturday over the weekend. And yeah, you know, Will's, Will's basically just been spending all of his waking moments developing games, um, which is really useful for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we figured we'd talk a bit about that, then go into, um, you know, some of the experiences we've had from a real life scenario point of view. So where power apps are useful, why they're useful, perhaps even determining the differences between Canvas apps and model driven apps. And then potentially from there, if everything works out really well, we'll talk about some of the experiences we've had actually building the power apps themselves. So does that sound cool? Sounds great. Let's get to it. Fab. Okay, so just a quick uh, a quick start off. Recently, we got invited to one of the user group meetings, um, which was in Manchester, actually, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I had the opportunity to have a power app off with a chap called Craig Bird from Microsoft. Sorry, the legend of Craig Bird. He's an absolute legend. Um, and essentially, the whole goal was to prove to the community that you know you can you can develop some really good-looking Canvas and model-driven apps based on pretty much anything you'd like. Um, they didn't give us a scenario. They basically just said go and do it. So um, we, I, I, I ended up picking PSA, believe it or not. And my whole idea was to generate a Canvas app that allowed you to log, um, do raid logging. And if you're going to the boot camp, you can catch my session there. Shameless plug right there. <laughs> um, so I, I generated a Canvas app that allows me to generate um, those RAID logs. And then basically what it did was you could create those, capture that information, store it directly back in Dynamics. Then through a model-driven app, you had they had the ability, the users had the ability to take that, um, say, example, if it was a an issue, through a process and then feedback to the app. And then I also plugged in some Power BI, which I thought looked really cool. So there's an integration with Power BI using the canvas app functionality and uh basically like one of those old japanese movies my power bi will beat your app um i thought it would but craig <laughs> kicked my butt using um the azure translation services which was amazing so he ended up plugging in his canvas app into the azure translation services and he ended up typing something in english and it actually read it out in french i was blown away the audience was blown away i lost so i hang my head in shame my Power BI lost to his Azure Translation Services, but um, that's sort of the power that that you know we we were able to leverage the functionality. I built my app on the train. Craig did his really quickly as well, and we were able to show that to the audience. And I thought it came across really well. So yeah, it was a great experience from my point of view. So so that really speaks to you know with Power Apps, especially with the Canvas apps right now, it, you're really only limited to the creativity you have and your you're it's not like it's going to take you an enormous amount of time no. to to build or design this it's 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 relatively intuitive to to get to get going right away uh, absolutely and you'll see that in some of the games that will's designed where um you know you're really limited by your own imagination essentially and even then you've still got the whole community you can ask and there's loads of different examples so 
I definitely learned just in that experience that, you know, how useful Canvas apps could be and how awesome it is to provide users with a, a really intuitive interface that's designed by you for you. I mean, it's it's really about, you know, the citizen developer type of thing and um, right. g- giving them the right access to the right information at the right time. And, and really what I'm hoping that, that this podcast and and this and the, the website and, and your your guys site does for everybody is maybe shines a light on some of those areas where power apps can do things that maybe you haven't thought about before. You know, um, I had a similar kind of situation in field service when talking with Ben Volmer. He comes up with all these ideas that he's run into for IoT that I would have never have considered. So hopefully we could do the same thing for power apps and flow for our listeners um, in the future. Sean, I've got uh, some some good examples. Um, I've recently been doing a lot of work with uh, field service and, and power apps in particular. And w- one of the easiest ways and, and one of the great benefits of power apps, like Chris mentioned, is being able to embed it in Power BI. So you can take that sort of next level reporting and dashboarding uh, and then embed um, a, a power app of sorts or a number of power apps and, and start driving actions. And that's particularly useful in, in the field service space in terms of having work orders over certain certain amounts requiring approvals is the one that's that's come up most frequent. And instead of having someone to have to log into, into Dynamics uh, 365 for customer engagement or similar, uh, you can just surface that functionality through through a dashboard uh, or through Power Apps itself um, and then go ahead and just click a button and have these things approved and, and, and the technicians can carry on. Um, we're seeing similar things through um, IoT as well where you can go and issue device commands and, and do remote diagnostics through through a Power App, uh, but because of the, the connectivity and, and the ease of, of, of maintaining those apps and extending them, uh, it really becomes simple for a lot of people to get involved. That's awesome. I, I can see so many opportunities there in the field service space, so that's that's great. Well, and to me, it's the I'm same sorry. with uh, finance and operations with things like uh, I've, I've built apps recently for authorization to recruit. So if they, you've got a new uh, member of HR that, that needs to start recruiting for someone, they can easily just ping out a, a new position and that can be sent across to an app to be approved and so of actually having to log onto the system. And I think, you know, back again to the, the flexibility around building apps and it's only uh, limited by your, your creativity. Once you know the basics of, you know, a few, few formulas, the on select command, the variables, etc. Anyone can go ahead and build these games that you may have seen me post out recently, which is like a whacker hunting foot where you can start hitting Chris around a pitch and you know, Super score rude, points man. with the game. It's- I'm, I'm genuinely upset, man. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and don't worry, Chris, we are going to add a link to the show notes to that uh, YouTube video. Don't you Just worry about that. Wait for my rebuttal, Sean. You'll see. You'll see. I've, got, I've got some evil stuff planned. It's nothing personal. It's just all about you. That's it. Nothing personal. <laughs> but oh, I think babe. it highlights that it, you know Power Apps is so simple that even a, a FinOps or an AX guy can do it. So <laughs> well, and, uh, yeah, and, a bit like my oh, CE on it, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I just realized that Will is the first host on the on the CRM Audio Network that has anything to do with FNL. Ooh. Is this where I get booted off suddenly? You <laughs> well, this is, this is where this is probably where you get edited out in the final version. But you know, keep going, hey, keep I'm, talking. I'm enjoying it now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Good man. But Will, maybe tell the listeners, um, you know, a, a little bit of a backstory and how you got in, involved in Power Apps and and how you were able to pick it up because I think you've been doing it for about four or five weeks now, and you've uh, what's the latest count? About ten Power Apps that you have out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, so to me, uh, being in pre-sales, we sometimes get these requests come through where it's like, hey, Will, I uh, need you to learn Power Apps. And I at first went, okay, I've heard of it, but I've, I've never touched it. And I mean, this really goes to show you how easy it is to learn because you know, those who know me will know I'm not the brightest guy. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I sort of learned a lot of the basics within a day. So a bit of bit of engaging the community, seeing what your 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 colleagues and and others within the Dynamics 365 community has done via blogs, really useful start. And then just really sort of just trial trial and error and then after a while you know within a week i had a I had a good understanding of it and that's when of course i i did the sensible stuff i always start sensible and then after a week my mind slipped to hey what else can i do with this can i create a super mario game can i you know can i create a what's the other one the simpsons disco stew disco app uh there's, there's all sorts going on and there's, there's plenty more on the uh in the pipeline for that as well but um, it, it's well, it, 
really is easy. Will, what's the most important thing about the Mario game that you that you did? You built something into CRM, didn't you, or CE? I did. So as you go, as you progress through the Mario game and you collect those delicious coins, you then uh, you right at the end, depending on how many coins you've got, depends on how much the credit limit for the associated account slash player that you've used goes up by. <laughs> yeah, and then you save the princess, of course. You can't leave her hanging around. Oh, so you save Kyle? Yeah, yeah, you save Kyle. Uh, and it's good. <laughs> Fighting talk, I like it. <laughs> well, I'm making an app about you next. So, yeah, I mean, Sean, quite interesting because we uh, were at the D365 Saturday event this Saturday gone, and Chris was leading that from our side, and it was quite interesting because we had three different tracks there, one on field service, one on traditional Dynamics 365 customer engagement, and the other one on Power Apps and CDS. And the the Power Apps and CDS track was the most oversubscribed, and there was a lot of interest from the community. And Chris, maybe you want to share, you know, what was going on there, who the speakers were, uh, and and what some of the outputs were. Oh my lord, I can't remember the exact the exact names of the speakers. It was two of the chaps from the Microsoft team. Um, but essentially, they were doing a whole thing around. It's basically it's basically what we're going to be focusing on in the hackathon, but focus around CDS focus around the generation of both canvas apps and model driven apps and you're right it was massively attended and people are hungry for this information um the one thing that i found really interesting though is the fact that kind of at, when people when people subscribe to this event like there were there were a number of people within the dynamics track so i i had a fairly decent audience in the the dynamics 365 for marketing piece but you're right i think most people subscribe to the cds and um power apps track and I think that there was a lot of attention at our stand. So we had like a little booth there um, and Will had his Mario app running. And I know you got like loads of pictures and there was loads of interaction about the Mario app. And actually, it went pretty nuts on LinkedIn. I mean, I think loads of people seem to like it and understand sort of what, what his intention was, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I think Microsoft are doing the right thing and the community are doing the right thing and investing time in this because I think this is going to be the future. And um, promoting thing, people like the citizen developers and that, I think it's really, really important. So, from my opinion, I reckon that it, it went really, it went really well for them. And and we've seen the the conversion come through. We we're hosting this hackathon, and twenty uh, eighth is that right, Chris? Twenty eighth of July. Um, yep. As of today, we're fully subscribed. So so there's the indication. You know, fully subscribed. Over eighty people just wanting to get involved, wanting to learn. Uh, and and make use of of not only Power Apps but the the Biz Apps platform altogether, and and I think that's really exciting because a lot of the scenarios that used to be difficult to do previously are now really simple, and uh, you know that citizen developer concept is is hugely powerful, and you have them in every single organization. Well, and you know it, it's made me who's who's historically a CE guy, right? It's made me actually curious about a little bit of FNO. Whereas before, when it was just AX, I didn't. I was like, "There's got to be somebody else that can work on that." But there's now, you know, an interest at least at a high level to understand some of the basics, so that I I can I can know how what capabilities I now have with the new technologies that they're releasing. Because it, it's almost like I have all these toys. I, I want to really be able to play with all these toys. But if I don't understand FNO at least to a basic level then i i'm I'm missing out is that 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 sound crazy no i I completely echo you on that so it's one of the main drivers for me uh was was as soon as the cds got got deployed and and power apps sort of came into the picture for me and i started building these various apps i suddenly went okay what's going on over there what's what's this big ce thing you know i heard carl and chris go on about it i've heard it's not as hard as finops so I thought I'd go check it out. And, you know, and it's the same for me. I've started to see how I can get involved with that. And you know, even really simple stuff like just getting used to the, how the accounts are created and then working that into a power app. And then really it's helped me to explore further and further all the way up to actually uh, engaging with PSA now. So, yeah, completely echo you. Sean, maybe a question for you then, and, and it's one that we've been mulling around between the three of us, is – when does it make sense to do things in a Canvas app versus a model app? Uh, so we've just heard Will talk about, you know, transitioning over from, from FNO into CE and, and, you know, how easy it is and, you know, the rise of the, the, the citizen developer, if you will. Uh, you know, is that discounting from the traditional CE folk uh, or is it complementary? I mean, why wouldn't we just go and build everything in a Power App and, and, and forget about CE? 
Uh, well, so there's one one thing. If we if we all focused on just model driven power apps and forgot about CE, obviously there's a licensing ramification that we'd have to talk about. You also don't want to recreate things that are already built in CE, yep. right? So there's there's certain things you can do with a with a P2 license that you you can't with just a standard power apps licensing, right? So really in order to take full advantage of what I think the full platform is, you do truly need that that D365 license that that uh, you know, the full license to be able to get everything you need. And what you can do now, which is, I think, really cool, is you can ex you can extend CE or you can extend FNO with a with a model driven power app, which is something you couldn't do before. Right. You could do things now where you could link through CDS those two objects and and in in infrastructures in a model driven power app that adds additional capabilities that you wouldn't have in just CE or just FNO. And with, with to me, with a Canvas-driven uh, uh, power app, that's really for, um, if you want something more visually appealing, you're doing quick tasks, you're doing point solutions that are going to update CDS or update um, CE or FNO. That's kind of my perspective of it. Yeah, I mean, I completely understand. It's it, it's it's an interesting one because it gives all the power to to these citizen developers that um, can go and quickly pull these things together and may not have sight of the bigger picture, if you will. Um, that that being said, it's not always a bad thing, uh, but it it kind of raises the question as. Do you manage this, or do you let your citizen yep. developers run wild? Chris has got some thoughts on this. App Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, ge genuinely, man. You, th this is something that we've got to be careful of. Is It is so... I mean, I, w I want to use the term easy. It's probably not the best adjective, but it's, simple, it's easy or simple enough to generate these apps. But what happens when you have... All these cra this crazy amount of apps like being generated. Not, I'm not talking model driven. I'm talking Canvas apps. They're right. Just being generated by your citizen developers. I mean, the thing that that has big, become big in the UK and it will be around this whole pieces process. Um, you need to be able to. You need to teach people around. You know, when is the best time? Where is the best time? There has to be some sort of process into release, and you know that is that is going to be huge. So, Chris, maybe it's well in in. Yeah, well, real quick, what I was going to say is it, yeah. there ha there's ways to limit what it is they can do in those Canvas apps through yeah. permissions either in O365 groups or um, Dynamics 365 security roles. Um, I, to me, I, I, I'm, I'm hypersensitive to that. I, I don't want to yeah. have a thousand different Canvas apps, so I would greatly limit who has the ability to initiate a flow, for example. Um, who has the ability to even get to Power Apps through O365. But what that does do is it extends the admin visibility that you have to have in creating your solutions um, within Dynamics 365 to extend out to Office 365, which is something we haven't always had to do outside of an export to Excel or documents um, through SharePoint, right? Now we have to be a little more cognizant um, because a lot more things are moving to the admin center for O365, especially for monitoring for um, GDPR and such yep. with auditing. Um, we have to be more cognizant of the O365 experience as well as Dynamics 365. I totally agreed. It, it's, it came up today in one of the customer meetings we had. I mean, it's it's massively important. And Sean, I think you, you touched on something really interesting there. From a from a CE and you know I've had this discussion with Will as well today actually from a CE point of view a customer engagement point of view you're not just a customer engagement person anymore anymore you know it's it's looking you need to understand more and more of the stack and I remember you know in CRM three and CRM four oh cool you know you needed how to needed to know how to create entities and attributes and blah 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 but now you need to really understand how the whole thing fits together well as much of it as possible. And if we're going to be leveraging model-driven apps and power app, well, um, model-driven apps and canvas apps to their true potential, we need people that understand that. And I guess that's that's one of the things that I've been striving for, and I know Carl and Will have. And Carl and I, Will and I were actually talking today around the hackathon. You know, we need we want to get people to start interacting with FinOps and you know, posting to FinOps, and how do we do that, and what's the best process? I mean, 
like you said before, we need to keep a we need to be able to start thinking about that and having more of an open mind around what's available within Office 365. Absolutely, and it is something we definitely have to keep in mind now. Um, and as we're getting more, uh, going back to the concept of of having some kind of connection to F and O in, in yeah. terms of your skills skills and knowledge base, you know that that whole Dynamics 365 concept it really is hitting home and it it, it was it got to, it's it's at a point with just ce there's so much capability in ce it's hard to know everything in ce and now it's even expanding to d365 where you're never going to know everything in d365 or office 365 right but you have to understand yeah. um where things connect and how you can take advantage of those Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we're seeing it more and more with the products like, um, you know, PSA and field service where, you know, there's a lot of crossover into things like FinOps. Um, and I guess from from my education point of view, it's something that I need to work on and, and read up more on. And also in the real life world with a customer, I mean, I'm going to give you an example here. This is something that came up the other day where an inspection app. So you're having a Canvas app doing your inspections, et cetera, et cetera. That's front end. So that I call it front front office. <laughs> for lack of a better term. So you have somebody out in the field doing their inspections. That inspection gets pulled into Dynamics 365 customer engagement. Um, and essentially the, the that manages all the process, but then again, pushes that the kind of core information back into FinOps for compliance, po compliance point of view, from a compliance point of view. And then overlaid on top of this whole thing is Microsoft Power BI. Now to me, that's a very, very powerful solution. That's something that's massively useful. And um, I think that that's a great a great example of what could happen with you know the full stack, and that's a tiny that's a tiny little piece of it. There's so much more we could be doing. So, Chris, I think one of the things that complements it really well, and we haven't touched on it a lot, is, is flow and and just making sure that hmm. any of these apps that we're putting together, uh, where they do need to be extended outside of the CDS and 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 pull in elements from other systems, you can still do that, and and that's still in the realm of the citizen developer. Uh, I mean, you've had a long career in Dynamics, and you know that trying to integrate things uh, from 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 system to system used to be a major development task and take a number of uh, of months to to develop and test. And now, uh, with technologies like Flow, we can just go and use the pre-built connectors, continue that business process flow, and and ultimately just realize you know the customer scenarios quite quickly and and, and generate that value almost immediately. Yeah, I agree with you there, Carl. An example of that that I've done recently was uh, when I first got handed this sort of Power Apps task was the on-site inspection app, which allows you to take pictures and associate it back to an account within CE. And just using Flow and, and connecting that back to SharePoint is when then exposing that in CE was really, really easy within reason. You know, I did that within a few hours and it, was, it just extended it incredibly well. Was that your big brother stalker app? maybe tell sean all about it uh, because it was sean it's it's really quite scary you know like uh cia and nsa have got nothing on what will can do with the power app <laughs> if you wake up with an iot sensor under your knuckle or something it's <laughs> it just sounds a bit creepy i don't like the picture that's getting painted here um so, so, so Kyle, uh, and I'm, I'm going to push forward with Kyle that it was his idea, not mine. Um, yeah. <laughs> Share the blame. <laughs> oh, what if? So, so it started off with a very nice just check-in, check-out app. So if you're like, say you're working on a construction site and they want to know for health and safety purposes who's on site, who's not, you know, they can go in on their app, they can check in. It takes a longitude and latitude and stamps that against a SharePoint list. Now, Kyle, of course, wanted to go one step further and turn it into a full-on stalker app. So, uh, you know, happily I obliged to that. And uh, <laughs> is, that like Tinder, is that like Tinder for power apps? Oh, will? man, it's stronger. It will find if the person's near you <laughs> so you can quickly get to them. Um. <laughs> but but what, what I think we're all hiding is the person that, that Kyle was stalking was his hairdresser. He wanted oh, no. to know exactly when and where he was there. Hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple. They were having okay. a side side thing. It was not good. 20 man teeth. Just, let the, cat, uh, just <laughs> let the cat out the bag, Kyle. Now, now you're one hairdresser knows there's another one. <laughs> but just to uh, claw that back a little bit, it's uh, around, the, around the concept of geofencing. So if someone approaches a particular area that you've, you've, you've sort of scoped out, as soon as they enter within those coordinates, we want to be able to book that time, so, so stamp that time there and then without them having to physically press anything. 
So you can just run in the background. And as soon as, say, we're walking into a site, it goes sunny, Will's checked in. And yeah, it's kind of a bit bit, bit creepy, but it's, uh, it's also incredibly useful. I think it... Well, there's a fine line between being an enthusiast and being creepy. Yeah, and I, I Don't worry, you're still okay. It. Always cross it. Yeah. yeah and a good application, Chris, for you in particular is, you know, geofence <laughs> the pub. And as soon as you are within that radius, your loyalty card can kick in, your beer will be ready for you at the bar. There it is. You know, it's a, it's a really extensible idea that you can take from Power Apps, package it up and deploy it in multiple scenarios. Dude, you so know, the pub could so yeah. immediately submit an order for additional kegs. Exactly. And steak, Sean, and steak. Oh, there you go. And beer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's a great idea. Um, I d- I just wanted to bring so, um talk about something real quick, and I thought this was important. Is around designing. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about model driven apps right now. Um, I just want to talk about canvas apps and around designing them. So I've got to tell you guys about an experience I had recently designing one of these things, and this is a good example of doing something the incorrect way. <laughs> right. So. Designing my Canvas app, um, you know, bringing out my different screens. So I've got screen one, screen two, and I'm like, cool, I'm building this whole model in my head of what I, what I should and shouldn't be doing. And I'm trying to link it all together, and I realized that I didn't name everything correctly. Right? So you've got 20 screens called screen from screen one to screen 20 or whatever, and um, decided that I didn't name them or didn't name them properly because I was in a rush. And then having to look for stuff after that was a bit of a pain. But um, I've I've worked in like drag and drop um, web design environments, and obviously everyone's used PowerPoint and Excel, and you know it, it felt a little bit like that. But um, because I didn't name things and name things correctly, it just it turned out a bit bad for me. And I learned from there that best practice around designing these things and making them work properly is to actually get the right naming convention in. It was a bit of a a bit of a hard lesson. But I know, Will, you when you started yours, I mean, you had apps with tons and tons of screens. How did you how did you manage? So yeah, no, it's a it's a bloody good question. The thing is, uh, is, is I didn't, I guess. <laughs> I was all, I'm, you know, how my style is. I just want to get it out there, get it out there. But uh, if, yeah. if we can relate this quickly back to the uh, Dynamics 365 Saturday London event we went to, and one of the Power App sessions, which was by a, a very knowledgeable guy on this called uh, Rory uh, Neary. Uh, you may have seen his stuff. He, he produced some really cool stuff, and he was pushing the fact that uh, you, naming conventions are king. So if you're going to, he sort of recommends that if you're going to do a, a screen naming convention site of SCR, keep that consistent and then with variables as well, maybe have VAR at the beginning of everything. So when you are typing, mm. you can see a list straight away of all your different variables, of all your different screens. And that will really help you when you're writing these formulas instead of going and going through this long list and, you know, navigating your way through. Yeah, I, I genuinely struggled with that. And I guess it's because we get a bit too excited in the beginning. And then start just chucking stuff onto screens and this and that, oh, and then oh man. you know, and when, two hours later, <laughs> it's broken. And when and when you do copy and paste, so you say you did it on a, a label, so you get label one, then label un, one underscore one, label one <laughs> underscore two, and it just goes on. And on, and on. <laughs> it's a perfect naming convention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then 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 you're just clicking around to try to figure out what label is to what thing, and then how, before you rename them, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've been there. I, I I think I think it's something important to remember. So if you if you're starting out with stuff like, with the Canvas apps, um, just be smart and name stuff correctly because yeah, it'll save you loads of time. That's one thing I learned right in the beginning. And I saw there's there's also another little uh, helpful tip and 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 bit of functionality that was released um, last week um, around the app checker. So with all yeah. the formulas that are that are going in and and can be put in, uh, it's 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 very easy to make a typo um, or put something in incorrectly. Um, and, 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 you know, obviously the built-in functions are there to help you. And uh, the app checker in particular, validating those formulas. So now that you've got your naming convention right, you can make sure that the functionality is acting as you expect and that you haven't made any typos. And, and Will, you used this quite a lot in putting yours together, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I found it more useful to, to flag up where, within, especially with Super Mario, so I had loads of screens to make that work. And, uh, you know, sometimes I get a bit lazy when I'm building and I'll have an error and I know it's not really affecting the app too much. So, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll put it off. I'll come back to it. Let's deal with the bigger problems and then go back and, and sort out the small ones, which not always the best strategy. But one one thing I really did use this new inspection functionality for was actually tracking those. So you can actually double click and it will take you back. It will drill you back through the app to where you need to be. And I found that, I found that incredibly useful. Okay. So, and, and for those for those listening, if you're not familiar with the app checker, we're talking about the little icon that looks like a stethoscope uh, in the uh, cam, in the Canvas Power App 
screen, right? That's what we're That's talking about. All right, there you go. Ran, ran a question. Um, did any of you guys try and build uh, any of the apps in the the Sienna function, the Sienna project um, suite? So where essentially Power Apps was birthed from? Nah, no. I wasn't born then, Chris. Sorry, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> <laughs> not, not I, sir. Not I. Yeah, I was I was reminiscing the other day, looking at a couple of screenshots, and um, it's interesting. Oh, <laughs> I, I'd say that's definitely it's definitely really different, but. Um, I remember trying. Yeah, I remember trying to build out an events app, which I probably still owe one of my colleagues about two years ago, three for one, no, three years ago for one of the convergences. And um, I remember just really struggling, struggling with the Sienna interface. And for me, this is just like chalk and cheese. It's really awesome. So, so just on that, and Sean, a question for you, uh, if you don't mind. Um, yes, sir. Talking, talking about uh, CE in particular and, and the deprecation of dialogues. Uh, do you see Power Apps and Flow together, kind of? Um, filling that void and and filling that void by providing a proper biz apps platform rather than just CE native functionality. Where do you, where do you think Power Apps is going to grow? Power Apps and flow together. Well, well, I, I could definitely see a translation because it, it lends itself to it, right? Um, the, the the difficulty that I you'll probably see though is if if and when dialogues are fully deprecated. Um, you're you're most likely going to have to recreate that dialogue within Power Apps. Um, you now you have the ability to to call variables. You actually have, I think, a little bit more capability in Power Apps than you do in dialogues currently. Um, so for for a lot of folks, it's going to actually give you an opportunity to enhance what you're currently using in dialogues, or maybe eliminate some dialogues altogether. Right. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see that being a a transition peer point for for dialogues in the future. So I, I bring up the point because I mean we can already trigger flows from from within CE, and I, I'm just wondering to myself how long do you think before you know we're going to be able to trigger Power Apps in a dialogue form uh, from 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 CE? Well, I mean, you could technically you could trigger a Power App from CE now by creating a button. Yeah. And and put in the URL, you know, making it a URL uh, launchable button. Let's, let's call it an so, embedded Power App, or a you know a CE native. Uh, do you see where I'm getting at? Mm, so yeah, I do. I do. I do. I would probably I would probably think that you would you probably wouldn't see that until and this is total guesstimation. My opinion has nothing to do with anything real. Um, I would think until until we fully move to the unified interface and there is no more web client, I wouldn't think you would be able to do that until then. Mm-hmm. I couldn't see them. I couldn't see them building that functionality in the web client only to deprecate it later. Deprecate it and when, if and when that ever happens. Yeah, I mean, just an interesting yeah. question because it's a, it's a logical yeah. extension. I mean, we it's functionality that we're looking for, um, and to try and stop the. Uh, the zombie apocalypse of apps from happening that that could be one of the yeah. ways to simplify it up yeah indeed, indeed. Kyle, can, can i can i can i flag that term now from now on and just say we're going to call it the zombie apocalypse apocalypse of apps like every time something <laughs> every time we go and demo at a customer beware the zombie apocalypse of apps i, I think sean's trademarked <laughs> it already unfortunately <laughs> well, it, if I haven't, Joel Lindstrom has, and he already has the domain. So, oh. you know. <laughs> the zombie apocalypse of apps. That's right. Somebody's got yeah, a great never, Walking Dead app. <laughs> never say anything in front of the Podfather that you don't want him to trademark. Um, <laughs> hey, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> and now I wonder if he's going to edit that part out because he'll be editing in this podcast. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably got myself in trouble. Yeah, you probably got uh, in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I I did notice uh, about the D three sixty five Saturday. There is an upcoming one in South Africa. Will yeah. either one of you be at that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not allowed back into South Africa, Sean. <laughs> oh well, that's not <laughs> <bad>. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the incident. <laughs> there was it lots was a, of it, chocolate pudding involved. <laughs> yeah, there was an incident with Charlie's Theron, and she just made some. Uh, how did you know? Calls. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that's just because of my dashing looks, Sean. That's exactly. How, yeah, that's what happened. So, 
So one other thing I'd like to bring up is is there's been obviously great support and enthusiasm from um, the the sort of dynamics community, but there's also been a, a huge amount of uh, uh, emphasis placed on this by Microsoft and particularly the the CSMs, the customer success managers. Um, and and Will, mm-hmm. I know you've had a couple of them reach out to you and and help you promote. Uh, promote the work that you've been doing and, and also give you some insights and share some, some content with you. Um, so for anyone that's kind of looking to get involved, maybe explain how they supported you. So, yeah, I mean, to be honest, the, uh, the support in general around PowerApps has been phenomenal. I've, uh, so just from sharing on LinkedIn and, and Facebook, Facebook's very key for this sort of stuff as well, I've noticed. Uh, I've, I've had message requests and, and friend requests come across uh, from both of those avenues and just saying, hey, well, uh, so Pratath and Sarab uh, may have pronounced those names incorrectly uh, from the America customer and partner success teams. As soon as I saw my apps, like, you know, really like what you're doing. If we can help you anyway, let us know. Uh, and they had a phone call with me and sort of I, I, I had a few of the issues I had around it that I couldn't quite figure out. They pointed me in the right direction. Uh, we've had Stephen Ede as well. He uh, We had a meeting with him. He was uh, he was really useful and sort of gave us an overview of Power Apps and where he thinks it's going and and, and sort of some functionality. And another uh, sort of big shout out who's who's really awe inspiring for his ability with them is, is a, a guy called uh, Brian Dang. And he creates these most amazing Power Apps and he's happy to share those. So he'll share all these uh, f- advanced formulas with you from, you know, from games to, to, to other. And, you know, they've just been incredibly, incredibly helpful. Anything I've asked for, I've, I've basically, you know, been sent it, which is fantastic. So uh, is there is there a, a formula cheat sheet? Because that would be phenomenal. I, I, I myself, I'm building up one, but there is uh, there is on the documents, uh, you know, the Power Apps documents section of the of the Microsoft website, there is a sort of cheat sheet there of sorts. I'll try and dig it out and see, see what I can find, but I don't think it's as thorough as you would like it to be. Right. Well, remember remember the old the old school. Um, it was probably 2016. Well, see, it was CRM 2016. They would have cheat sheets for um, for JavaScript functions. They would have cheat sheets. That that's kind of what I'm trying to envision. I think that would be incredible if you had if we had something like that. Okay, I mean, I'm not quite sure what they are. I mean, with my we'll we'll just put one well, together. Basically, yeah, yeah basically, <laughs> well, I'm saying create this for, create this cheat sheet for me. I want one now. That's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> I was trying to do it nice, you know. Will is a bit slow sometimes. <laughs> Just spell it out for him. What's going on here? Why would I hear people? <laughs> <laughs> I think another good source, though, is the blog, the official Power Apps blog. Um, there's yeah. a lot of tutorials. Yeah. There's a lot of how-tos, uh, and you can pick things up from there. The guys are really responsive. Uh, there's, there's usually two or three posts a week. Uh, great way to learn, pick it up, uh, see what other people are up to. Is it is it me um, or or Kyle? Is it is it me or is it is that blog in particular a lot more detailed and a lot more user friendly than what we've seen with other uh, functions when they launch? I'd have to agree, um, and just the the, the sheer volume, uh, quantity as well right. as quality. Um, so detailed walkthroughs, the things build up, uh, the links are there. Um, it's it, it's enough detail not to um, sort of scare you away from reading a three-hour post, but uh, it, it gets you where you need to get, um, and and a new one every other day, which is you know keeps you engaged and wanting to build more power apps. You know that's what keeps Will going. He keeps uh, double espresso in the morning and three power apps by lunch, and that's and that's his day. Good man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> Did any did any of you guys do the app in a day workshop? I know I, I know I think Will you did I, it. I dabbled oh, in I it. Know. Yeah, you dabbled. Dabble. I did the work. I, I didn't go to an event, but I did the work. I downloaded the um, yeah the content and did it. Yeah, it was it, that was what really got me to where I understand. And this this will sound so silly. It will sound so silly, but that's what made me realize what a model driven power app is. <laughs> I, I could no not kidding. get I, over. I, neither could I. I couldn't get it past it. And, and and Joel finally said, "Dude, it's CRM." Yeah, the, I couldn't. And I, went, oh. I genuinely, you're not alone, man. I, you're not alone. I, I was like, "What is this? What is this thing?" I did, you know, I didn't even know where to switch it on on the interface, like where you switch between canvas right. and model. I'm like, w- "Where is this thing? What is it?" And then eventually, yeah. it is the absolutely as you said, it's the thing that kind of, you know, an elegant epiphany, if you will. Where yeah. I was like, "Oh my goodness, I understand there were lights and all sorts of different things, but." That's if you really want to get it, and to anyone that's listening, if you really want all the lights to turn on, 
I reckon do that app in a day workshop if you can. It's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. It, it really gets you. It gets you to understand data sources, mm. formulas. It gets you a basic understanding of all the basic controls like galleries and in buttons and and navigation. Uh, it, it shows you how to connect to Dynamics 365 and to CDS. It really does a great job with packaging all of that into a, uh, a, a, a and we'll put a link to the content in the show notes, but you can get to all of that stuff in, in a day. And, and by, oh, the, yeah. I, by the end of it, you, are you a complete expert? No, you're not a complete expert. But what you are is you're knowledgeable enough to where you can go, I know I saw this before, and you'll have somewhere to go back to with those Power, PowerPoint uh, slide decks, with the PDFs that they provide. It's a really great bit of content. Oh, absolutely. I I'm still I'm still using some of it. I mean, I've I've basically taken samples from what Will's done from from those from the app in a day stuff and that's what's helped me learn. And um yeah, yeah it's, it's been it's been massively useful, so yeah, definitely a, a good shot to do that. Should should we talk about some of the some of the limitations? I mean, we've been fairly glowing about Power App so far. Uh, you know, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> right. you know, let's do it. Conscious that you know the, the platform is still relatively new, and there are a couple of bugs to be ironed out. Um, one of the favorite ones, Chris. I know you've got an interest on this on 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 offline and sort of mobile offline. And while there is some capability there, it's limited. Uh, you know, to, to to twenty meg. I think the limit is if you can confirm a well, maybe you've. You know it offhand. Um, so you know it's going to work in in online scenarios, but if you're in a, a farm in the middle of nowhere and you've got no connectivity, maybe you're not going to be able to use Power Apps, and and, and maybe that's who it's targeted at. Uh, that's sort of an open question. Um, in, I am avoiding answering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so that, that that's one of the shortcomings for for the time being. Yeah. Um, Will any others that you want to call out specifically? No, I don't like talking negative about power apps. Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I mean, the, well then, well then, let me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got a couple of ones as well. So. The, the 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 big one for me is uh, the lack of a real um, SDLC for it. Right? There's no, you know, you you're either in process and you save it and you publish it, or you don't. There's no there's no dev test kind of yeah. Capability. Big, big problem. Big problem. You know, and then and then the whole publishing. Um, you know, if if they're if you want to publish to everybody within your org, that works great. But if you wanted to package it up and and send it out, you that's there's a there's a packaging and preview, but um, I haven't I haven't fully got it to work the way I would like it to. So uh, my 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 real rub right now is with Canvas apps and the and the and the um. SDLC part of it, the the software development lifecycle of it. Yep, we had that brought up at the user group conference, and um, I think, God, I, I don't, I genuinely don't know how to how to even respond because we haven't tried anything in production um, or even in dev, so at the moment, and that's my personal view. Um, the one the one thing that I'm really struggling with is with the syntax and the formula syntax. So I did a I did a comparison. I took a look at one of the apps Will built. And I took a look at another one of the apps that I, that person X had built, and then another one, and the syntax was different, in the different in the different well from from a formula point of view, and it's just really I just struggled with that. I thought, well, why is it working this way and not this way, and then this way in another environment? And maybe it's just me either overanalyzing or misreading something, but I didn't find complete a complete standard with the formulas. And is that just me? I think that's a call out for Will and the cheat, the formula cheat sheet. If anything, yeah, <laughs> it's you, Chris. It's never happened to anyone. No, genuinely, <laughs> it's and I'm not the fir- I'm <laughs> I'm not the first person to say it. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, it's been relatively consistent. Well, uh, but but maybe you're uh, you're trying to achieve something different than what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. I guess my polite way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Well, I can't read. No, no, it's fine. It's okay. You're doing good. But the, Chris, I think it's a valid point. It, it, it's mm. like CE, where you can achieve the same objective in a number of different ways. And right. I think a really good Power Apps developer slash citizen developer, whatever we're going to call them, is going to be somebody that's got a bit of experience and yeah. knows that there are two or three ways to, to achieve the outcome and you know picking the right one. Uh, that's, that, that's what's going to differentiate 
a good power app versus a bad bad power app from a design and sort of implementation point of view. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. Um, I just I think from a learning point of view, it's just maybe there has to be some sort of conformity. I don't know if that, that word come from. Yeah, I think you know there's got to be there's got to be a way that for me you know for me I just I found too many ways to do things and I just muddled things up in my brain. Yeah, I can appreciate that. And, and you know, it, it, I think to Kyle's point, I think as, as it matures, we're going to start seeing more best practices. And I'm sure they're going to modify or add formulas to make things better, mm-hmm. you know, just like they did uh, in Excel. Because um, r- right now, pretty much Power Apps is being marketed. If you can write a formula in Excel, you can write a formula in Power Apps. And it's not, mm, it's mm-hmm. not exactly that, but it's close, right? So I had an yeah, interesting okay. thought on that. Would you think that Power Apps, considering the color as well, is the evolution of Access Databases? <laughs> oh, God, I got mute. Oh, geez. Topical, Ugh. cause a well, bit of hopefully, debate. Ho- hope, hopefully not. Hopefully not. So, and and if, if, if George Dubinsky is listening to this podcast, he's screaming at this <laughs> phone right now. Um, cause, because that's where, that's where it gives citizen developers a bad name. Whenever all you got whoever whoever doesn't like a citizen developer concept, all they got to do is say access, and then their argument the argument falls apart. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I, I hope not. I do. I hope not because the database is elsewhere. The Power Apps is just the UI, but we'll see. Slightly topical forms over data. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. colors are the same, which is worrying. <laughs> Yes, exactly. exactly. Well, we're we're almost at time, so let's let's wrap up. Cool. Any 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 last comments that you want to uh, throw out when you're in in your guys' first episode of the Power Apps podcast? What are you looking forward to in the future? What are you uh, What are you looking to talk about in the future? Anything you want to talk about? I just want to see how this progresses, and I think it's about progression for me. Where you know we're talking about it at the moment, and we. You know where it could be used and where you know how we could be doing things. I'm hoping that in a few months it's where what we have done and you know what we are doing. That's what I'm hoping for, and I want I want to see this become real. You know I don't want to right. see a Canvas app just being built because it's cool. I want to see a Canvas app being used in real life. And my goal over the next six months is to implement this somewhere and provide cus- a customer with value utilizing this product. That's my goal personally. Yep, mine as well. Mine as well. So f- yeah, Kyle? for me, um, I'm 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 really interested in in the evolution of of CDS and and that platform, um, particularly with a, a couple more of the um, connectors becoming two way. So I mean, we've got FNO and and CE two way today, and Salesforce coming. But I think the power of uh, well, the power apps and their power will be extended. Uh, when you're able to write into into CDS and and it's picking those things up and translating them into other source systems automatically for you, uh, it's just going to create a huge you know um, broad capability even more so than we have today on Power Apps. Will, what do you think? So uh, I'm echoing what they both say. So the evolution is key for me. And and one thing I'm very excited about is uh, from a finance and ops uh, perspective is once Flow actually comes with a trigger functionality for certain records and items within finance and operations, I really think we're going to have a lot of power brought to Power Apps just through doing that small piece there. Uh, So I'm looking forward to actually embedding this in, in some functional way. I've done a few bits, but, uh, uh, you know, as Chris said, it'd be really good to see it being used by, uh, by one of our customers. Very cool. So in wrapping up, let's uh, we're, we're going to put this in the show notes. But if if uh, people want to con- they want to connect with those Dynamics guys, they want to talk to Will and find out why he can't catch a train. How would they do that? <laughs> oh, that, that, that's really so if funny. they want to if they want to reach out to you guys on the uh, interwebs, what's the best way to do it? Uh, pretty simple. Just uh, type in go into your browser, type in dynamics365society.uk and um, you'll get us over there. It's got a pretty little gray, blue and dark blue or light blue and dark blue icon with three little dudes. So that's us. And then obviously on LinkedIn, um, just search our names. You'll pick us up there. Um, Will shares lots of games. Um, (laughs) But yeah, best place is directly through the site. You can register and we've got lots going on at the moment. All right. So what what we'll do is we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, we'll put a link to your guys' uh, LinkedIn profiles or Twitter. What do you want? 
Both. All of them. All the profiles, Sean. Both, yeah. Well, we're going to put it all up there. It's going to be all in the show notes. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm saying it's going to be fantastic because Chris is going to send me all that information right after this podcast. <laughs> right after this break. <laughs> yeah. Nothing for me to actually do except send to Joel. Oh. So this has, been, this has been a lot of fun. I've, I've actually learned some stuff, which is great. Um, I, I, I can't believe we actually have someone that knows FNO on the network. I'm just kind of sidelined by it's that. Weird for, it's weird for everyone, Sean. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It's yeah. very uncomfortable. But um, but uh, this has been great. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys in uh, two weeks. Indeed. And um, again, this has been the Power Apps Podcast. You guys have a great day. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Sean. Cheers. This has been the Power Apps Podcast from CRM Audio. Send us your feedback at mail powerappspodcast.com Check out other episodes from the CRM Audio Network by going to CRM Audio in your browser or searching for CRM Audio on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, any place else that you can find podcasts. This is a production of Dynamics Podcast, LLC. 